I thought it might be worthwhile to uh, show how the velocity relationship for elastic collisions works. In an elastic collision, in a perfect elastic collision, in the velocity relationship, in a perfect elastic collision, not only do you have the conservation of momentum equation working, which will allow you to solve for one unknown, but you also have the following relationship. You have the kinetic energy before the collision is equal to the kinetic energy after the collision. That's the requirement for a perfect elastic collision. That gives you two equations because the conservation of momentum would be m1 v1 initials uh, plus m2 v2 initial equals m1 v1 final running out of room m2 v2 final I kind of squeeze that in there uh, this relationship would be one half m1 v1 initial squared plus one half m2 v2 initial squared equals one half m1 v1 final squared plus one half m2 v2 final squared um, so you can see that um, you now have two equations and therefore you can solve for both final velocities but the kinetic equation while it's useful is a pain because everything is squared and uh, there's a simple way to do this uh, we can combine both equations and come up with a simpler one. And we're going to do that in the following way. We'll start off to um, we'll start off with the momentum equation. That's the easier one. M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial equals M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. What we're going to do is we're going to group together now ordinarily we group together initial and final conditions as we've done here but this time we're going to group together the masses and we're going to have uh, i'm going to take this i'm going to subtract m1 v1 final from both sides and as well so that i get uh, and let me do it this way m1 v1 initial minus m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 initial equals uh, of course, that cancels out there, M2, V2, final. Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract M2, V2, initial from both sides to give me this equation, M1, V1, initial minus M1, V1, final equals M2, V2, final minus M2, V2, initial. All right, well, now you can see I've lumped together similar masses on each side of the equation. I'm going to factor out the mass. So I get M1 times V1 initial minus V1 final equals M2 V2 final minus V2 initial. Uh, okay. So I've gone about as far as I can go there, uh, but notice the relationship. I've got M1 times a factor of the change in velocity, and I've got M2 times the change in velocity of the um, object 2. Well, let's now look at the kin kinetic energy equation. One half, one half M1 V1 initial squared plus one half m2 v2 initial squared equals one half m1 v1 final squared gotta make sure i get this right one half m2 v2 final squared first thing you can notice one common term one common term in each term one common uh, factor in each term you should notice that's the half so we can immediately eliminate the half uh, and get rid of that. But we're going to do the same thing. We're going to group together the mass 1 terms. So I'm going to want this to go to the left, and I want this to go to the right. So I'm going to subtract this term from both sides, and then I'm going to subtract this term 
from both sides. So in the interest of brevity, I'm going to write down uh, M1 V1 initial squared minus M1 V1 final squared, which basically I just took this term, subtracted it from both sides. And if I do that, it gets eliminated from this side and goes over to this side right here. Uh, likewise, I'm going to subtract this term from both sides which means it will disappear from the left and reappear on the right like this. M2 V2 final squared minus M2 V2 initial squared. Well, just like this term here, this right here, uh, I can factor out the uh, similar masses. So let me extend the page there a little bit. And I get M1 times v1 initial squared minus v1 final squared equals m2 times v2 final squared minus v2 initial squared. Well, if that, there is a similarity to those equations. Admit it. On the left side, I've got v2 final minus v2 initial. Here I have v2 final minus v2 initial. v1 initial minus v1 final, v1 initial minus v1 final. So there's a similarity. The problem is I've got squared terms here. So what can, how can I simplify those squared terms? Well, I can factor them out. I can factor those terms. So I get M1 times V1 initial minus V1 final times V1 initial plus V1 final equals M2 times V2 final minus V2 initial times v2 final plus v2 initial, right? Now we can see a similarity between this equation right here, right there, and this one right here. In fact, I've got m1 and times v1 minus v1 final, as you see down there. Rather, we're going to do kind of an interesting thing here. Rather than uh, substitute one thing into another. Let me just straighten this out. Rather than um, substitute one thing into another, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, let's call this, let's call this equation one, and let's call this equation two. I'm going to take equation two and divide it by equation number one. Let's see what happens if I do that. And Meanwhile, you can think about why can I do that? How can I do that? Is that valid? Well, yes, it's valid. I hope it's valid. No, it is valid. And so I take this equation and I'm going to divide it by equation one. And I'll just scroll up there so you can see it. And so it's going to be M1 times V1 initial minus V1 final. And here I've got M2 times V2 final minus V2 initial. And if you think about it, the reason I can divide it is because the values uh, are the same. Uh, this value on the left side of this equation must be equal, is equal to this value on this side of the equation. So, for example, if this were 15, this would be 15. Well, all I'm doing is I'm dividing this side of the equation by 15, and I'm dividing this side of the equation, oops, by 15. So it is, um, you can interchange these the sides of the equations. So it's a perfectly valid way to do business here. And what cancels? Well, you can see what's going to cancel. The mass is going to cancel. This term is going to cancel. This mass is going to cancel. And this term is going to cancel, leaving me only with the following relationship. And I'll put that in a different color. V1 initial plus V1 final is equal to this term up here, which I can simply write as V2 initial plus V2 final. And that becomes our second equation. Now, with this equation and with the conservation of momentum plus M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial equals M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. With this one and this one, one, two, I now have two equations to solve for two unknowns. My two final velocities could be an unknown, and that's how I'll approach
the conservation uh, of a momentum, elastic, perfect elastic con condition, uh, collision cases uh, and the problems we get. And we'll do some, and I'll do an example a little later.